So this hack I haven't seen, I haven't seen anywhere, but I just wanted, I thought it was very, um, a very practical way to put together a shimmer wall and also transport it. As some of you may know, I own a event rental business. So I'm always trying to find different ways to easily transport, um, transport and store a lot of my event uh, decor that I rent out. So uh, it comes in different colors. I only have black for right now. So, um, so yeah, we're going to get into it. So it comes with extra panel, extra little, uh, glitter sequin pieces. It comes with these whack zip ties that we're not using. And then it comes with these gloves. Like then, well, let me show you the rest of the stuff that we got to put together. Other supplies. Let's go. You're going to take your two grid panels out of the box for each box that you buy. You are going to receive two panels in one box. Then for your tea legs, you're going to take the tea legs out of the box. For every box of tea legs that you order from Uline, you will have uh, four. So basically the two grid panels and the four tea legs are all you need to start. As you take the tea legs out, you want to screw in the um, you want to screw in the feet. These help, it helps stabilize the tea legs for when you are putting the, attaching the tea legs to your grid panel. And you want to screw these in by hand. Um, there isn't really, you know, the only way to really do it is to um, either do it by hand or, or do a wrench and they screw all the way down until, um, until you can't screw it anymore. So you'll see where the teeth of the screw um, end. Next, you wanna figure out the size of the wall that you wanna make. So when you are making the wall, you want to keep in mind that the shimmer wall panels are, uh, are uh, 12 by 12. So each square of the shimmer wall is a 12 by 12 square, which does help for when you're trying to figure out what type, what size shimmer wall you want to make. So here, I am just fastening all of the shimmer wall panels together in um, in groups of six because I want to make a six by six wall and in total I will need 36 panels to do that as you are fastening the panels together you want to just keep in mind that these uh, the teeth of the fasteners are kind of hard to put together and snap together at first but over time they will get easier and easier to do. So by the time you have your uh, uh, one column together, you just want to move on to making a second column of six and then once you have two columns of six i suggest putting those two columns together to make 12 to make a group of 12. and so as you continue this method you should have three groups of 12 panels that are that can stand up um, in column formation
Next, you wanna take your grid panel and place it against the wall with the long side, long side down. You're gonna take one of your T legs. Now, I actually put the grid wall panel between my legs so that way it wouldn't fall over. And then I took the T leg and uh, two sets of screws and put the screws in my pocket. Screws, washers, and um, you wanna make sure you have two, um, two of the nuts, all, screw nuts also. So I put those in my pocket and then I made sure I lined up the T-leg to the bottom of the grid panel so there is like a little lip that you'll feel and you wanna make sure that the grid panel is on top of that lip so you don't want it too far down or the screws won't be flush against the panel. So as you place your T-leg down, it doesn't matter which side, which end you start on, um, but you're gonna place your T-leg, doesn't matter which side of the T-leg you place down first also. You just wanna place it down on the grid panel and there is two bars or two wires on the sides of the grid panel that you want to line up the T-leg hole um, in between those two bars. And so that's where your screw is gonna go into. And so I put both screws in first, so that way the, um, the T-leg wouldn't move. And then I got my washer on and then the screw nut on, and then I just screwed everything on by hand first, so that way it wouldn't wobble. And then I got a screwdriver and then to tighten it even more, you can also use a, um, a wrench. So this is kind of a close up version of what I just explained. So then that way you guys can see, see the process uh, more up close. have your two panels assembled you're going to place them side by side in front of whatever wall you're going to stand them up against and you want to make sure you have have a space behind the grid wall so that you can um, you can go be on the back side so you can fasten the uh, the shimmer wall to the pan the grid panels so to fasten the to fasten the shimmer wall against the grid panel, you wanna have heavy duty zip ties. The zip ties that come in the, in the shimmer wall box, I don't recommend. They are very, very light and flimsy, and you will have to use a lot of those just to, um, just to withstand the weight. So I don't suggest using those, and, but if you don't have any, um, just use what you have but if you I like to use the heavy-duty ones um, one because they're longer and that I get from Amazon so the link is down below I like to use those ones one because they're longer and two because they're a lot sturdier and heavier and they can stand a lot of wear and tear so as you're on the back back of the grid wall you just want to make sure that your panel is all the way up to the top the shimmer wall panel is all the way up to the top of the grid wall panel. So this is kind of hard to do with just one hand, but um, I did realize at the end that there is a difference between the, on the, there is a difference on the backside of the shimmer panels. So since I am gonna, you know, eventually be attaching balloons to this, I didn't really think it was a big deal. But, you know, just keep that in mind. You may want to um, switch your panel around because there are more grid lines going one way versus 
um, the other way. So this should secure this, the zip tie pulled all the way down will, will secure your sequin wall to the panel. And then you just wanna repeat these steps for each uh, column of 12 that you have. I always start, I always start in the middle because I, you know, I want to make sure that I have enough room on the left and the right of the panel, of the shimmer wall panel um, to have. But you start in the middle and then as you attach your additional shimmer wall panels, you just want to make sure that you're also attaching them together in the middle so that way there's no gaps. And then when you have all six, all six sequin shimmer wall panels, up attached to the grid wall you just want to make whatever adjustments you need to um, all the little squares just kind of eyeball it going um, row by row to see which squares are you know turned sideways or upside down um, some of them are missing which you know they do give you extra little squares to put on in the event that you find any missing ones one of the things I did find difficult in doing this is that the uh, grid wall, the actual like middle piece that's standing up uh, behind the sequin wall, it only comes in a two pack. So I would actually need, three, for a six by six, you actually need three grids, but it only comes in a two pack and I didn't want to spend, I didn't want to buy four and then, you know what I mean? So I think if I, if I get another color, then I will definitely buy um, two more two packs. So then that way I have three panels for my black wall and then three panels for my, you know, whatever other color I get. So that's for future reference. But you use sequin walls a lot or if you, um, if you tend to always rent out sequin walls a lot and you find that they're hard to transport, I would definitely um, use this met method. So then that way you just have your three panels and then you're just basically attaching the legs or you're basically transferring it with the legs on and you just have to set up the panels side by side. I think it makes it really, really easy. And especially when you are setting up for event decor, um, you really want to get in and get out because some venues, not mine, but <laughs> some venues don't give you a lot of time as a vendor uh, in the beginning. They only give you like a 30 minute to an hour window and so sometimes that's not enough time, especially if you're adding balloons, if you're doing, you know, if you're adding a, uh, a neon sign or a wooden sign to it, you know, that's gonna take time for you to adjust and make sure everything's, you know, perfect. So it's, it's better when your backdrop, when, when whatever backdrop you're using is easy to set up. So then the other things that you're adding to it can, you know, can have more time to do those things. And if you guys want more tips, tricks, and tutorials to make having fun affordable, then click on your screen for the next video.